Hey hang rats, how's it going? This is Bill and we are getting ready to put some baffles on Caitlin's airplane and hopefully get her to Oshkosh this year. Stay tuned, it should be fun. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna to try to help Caitlin out and get some baffles on her engine. She's got her 120 project. Some of you folks may have seen it following along on some of the uh, Facebook groups. What we're gonna work on today, help her out. She's out of town on a trip. So we're gonna work on putting the baffles on this thing. So we'll see how it goes. What we're gonna be using is Airforms uh, baffles, brand new kit. Um, and we'll, we'll show you all the parts and all that. We're getting ready to open the box here in a second. Some of you folks have probably been saying, hey, Bill, what's going on with the Foe Fighter? Well, since last time, I think I mentioned, uh, we bought a, a lip strut. We got another lip strut. Got that done, got it stripped, and it has been hot as heck. Triple digit, 100 degree Fahrenheit days, uh, about 102. Um, just crazy hot, and the stripper doesn't really work on it. Uh, you look outside, and... Um, there she is. She's uh, ready to get some work done on it. As soon as we get Caitlin's plane out of here, we're going to bring that one in. So that's going on. We also got a uh, Champion, 1959 Champion, 7GC, 7, 7GC. Um, that one's coming along and that's coming into the shop and you're going to see that one stem to stern on that. We've already blasted some of the tail feathers and whatnot. So you're going to see what's going on there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put some brand new baffles on Caitlin's plane. Um, these baffles that she had were pretty rough. In fact, let me, let me show you what we had here. So these are her baffles and they are pretty darn rough, real rough. Um, lots of chafing. You can see chafing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, from the cylinders lots of cracks lots of patches um, just really every piece is terrible shape the rear bulkhead piece <clears throat> has got patches 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 um, and then we took off the baffle material which was look, look at this patch um, we took off the there's a there's a chafe cut through there. So this is in really pretty rough shape uh, The cooling tube here is actually somebody decided to bend it That's nice instead of just loosening the bolts and twisting it so you can see this is what uh, we've got a replacement part there to go in so long story short we are going to Make all of this go away and put in a fresh baffle kit to that end we have from uh, Airforms up in Alaska, we've got a baffle kit for the Cessna 140. It's a C120 140 PCBK. So that's what it is. It has all these parts in it. And let's open it up. I'm not wearing a mic, I'm using the GoPro microphone. So hopefully, this comes out okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is while I'm installing this, I'm just going to voice over. So uh, that way we can do it. I'll probably end up fast forwarding on the boring parts. But this is what a baffle set or air forms up in Alaska looks like. Um, Got to be honest, this has been sitting in the box for quite a while. We haven't opened it up. So it's going to be a surprise to both of us. Okay, here we go. Cool beans, installation instructions, very handy. So we've got two pages there, return this information, installation instructions. Boom, get that out of here. Boom, boom. First part, this is all very well packed, very well packed. Okay, a lot of the little miscellaneous parts, kind of cool. Now the one thing Caitlin did do on this is she decided to um, kind of up trim and have all the parts powder coated. And these are just really nice. This is kind of a hammered finished gray, 
looks really good. <clears throat> uh, the baffle material is um, it actually has a fabric in it, uh, very high quality. I am very impressed with these. Um, the, then they're riveted on, nice and wide area washers, all solid rivets, no pop rivets, no junk. So, kind of cool. And every piece of paper, assume every piece of paper has a part in it. Inner cylinder baffles, cool. More solar stuff, very cool. Jeez. Another blast tube, very nice. Color matching, so that's cool. If anyone's looking for a blast tube, looks like we have an extra one. <clears throat> Lower, uh, or pardon me, <clears throat> cylinder head baffle. This is for the cylinder barrel baffle. So that's kind of cool. So these, yeah, they've got it. I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed actually. <clears throat> we have put, in the past, we have put individual pieces from airforms on aircraft. And I have been very impressed with the build quality and the fit, <clears throat> but this is um, the completeness of this as far as all of the pieces is, uh, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. And there's no paid, there's no paid, uh, <clears throat> no paid sponsorship or anything like that. This is um, the purchase for this aircraft. Now, Airforms, if you have anything for a Cessna 1961, Cessna 172B, I'll be at Oshkosh. Let's talk for the Foe Fighter. <clears throat> There's the rear piece. All nice. <clears throat> this is your uh, rear cylinder barrel area, rear cylinder head. This goes onto your valve cover. Um, different penetrations for this, where your blast tube goes. This is for your, I believe, this is going to be for your ignition wires, where they come in. <clears throat> Uh, and then this is your engine mount bolts. This bolts to the case. So nice, really nice and complete. Very well done. Okay, it looks pretty good. I am very pleased with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the, turn the camera off for just a little bit. Do a complete inventory on this, make sure we've got everything. Looks like we do. And then uh, we'll be right back. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, hey, we're back. So we went, did a complete inventory, removed a lot of the uh, tags that came with the shipping and all that. Removed the shipping tags so we can read everything. Went through and according to our parts breakdown, we are at 100%, which looks great. So we've got the rear baffle. Center baffle under the bottom of the engine. This is a 0200, uh, which is common to the C85 um, and the C90 engine. So for this aircraft, this is the kit. You have your bottom deflectors. You have your these other deflectors here. Again, review the parts manual. We've got the parts manual breakout and all that. The illustration show us. Make sure we get these in correctly. These are, uh, and you want to make sure that the deflectors are going the correct way. So that's for the bottom of the engine, for this is for the back, right side here, left side here, very uh, very well set up, uh, new deflector tube, which is great. In addition, they also, Airforms also included a winterization plate, so that's kind of a cool deal. Keep that in the glove box um, for the cold weather, so that's nice. We have the cylinder baffles, uh, upper and lower cylinder baffle retaining it, hardware and all that. We'll put the baffles in place. We'll just set them in place for now. We don't have the springs. We'll order new springs for that and get those coming. In addition, the cylinder, um, the rear cylinder retention spring goes around here. We'll have to get that too. Um, I believe I believe this has a spring. I'm not sure. Looking at the parts manual, uh, they're showing a spring. 
on certain models, others not. So we've got to double check that out. But on later models, there was a retention spring that went around here. So we'll get that sorted. Um, anyway, everything looks pretty good. Now, is this part, are all these parts just going to drop in great? No, no, not at all. But they're going to be about 99% perfect. Uh, they, I, we've been real pleased with these. However, there are going to be some areas on these that we are going to probably have to um, relieve some stresses or relieve some clearance areas. We're going to be doing that with uh, pretty much electric drill. We have got a rotary cutters and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got electric drill. Uh, we don't have air in the building right, quite yet. So we're going to be doing that. And we're only going to be taking off maybe 16th of an inch or 18th eighth of an inch off of the edge of the um, metal just to clear some castings and things of that nature. Airform did a great job of replicating the Cessna parts, and the Cessna parts fit the same way. So there's going to be a little bit of um, refinement there. Uh, we had one here. Uh, this here is uh, goes on the left underneath. And this is fouling the casting for the pushrod tube return uh, casting there. So we know that we're going to take off about uh, three or four millimeters um, up to an eighth of an inch, something like that. Um, there was another one. Uh, this one here, this item here, we're going to have to actually bend this because this is getting into the intake tubes. So we're going to, we're not going to remove that area. We'll actually bend this and get it more of a 90 degree. And that way it'll clear the intake tube. So most importantly, we don't want any chafing, we don't want any rubbing, we don't want any metal on metal, metal on the engine, <clears throat> baffles on the engine, engine on the baffles, or baffle on baffle. We want this all to fit just about perfect. So that's our plan there. We did, I did some little research, I was doing some uh, work on the installation already. Realized that in order to, uh, these are things you don't understand until you get the uh, aircraft and the engine all put together. We had to remove the uh, one of the intake tubes. Looks like we're going to have to remove both forward intake tubes to get the uh, baffles in. Not a problem, but that way we get under all of the pushrod tube retaining springs and all of that. So that'll that'll uh, work out pretty well. I think if you had the real gasket pushrod tube kit, you wouldn't have quite as quite the conflict. But this is made for a stock engine, so in order to get our clearance, we're going to have to. Uh, remove that temporarily and then we'll put it back on. We took one side off and uh, looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just slowly fit these parts up and uh, run the camera and I'll uh, I'll kind of talk over it. But right now everything's looking pretty good, but we are going to have to do a little uh, work on probably, I wouldn't say, I would say half these parts are probably going to require a little uh, a little grind or two, uh, just, just little bits because while these parts are just fabulous, um, and they made them just like Cessna did, uh, they're probably, because of the variability of the engine parts, we're going to have to just do a couple little clearance um, reliefs so that we make sure we have air gap, we're not metal on metal. So that's where we are right now, off to putting baffles in, one at a time. So what I'm doing right now is disconnecting the lower nuts that hold on the push our tube castings onto the crankcase. On the left side of the engine, there's four of them on the bottom. And we're gonna be using those to attach the lower pieces of the baffle. And again, fitting them in, we had to remove the one push rod tube, so it's kind of easy. What I'm fighting with right now is getting the inter-cylinder baffle in. Now, sometimes these are pretty easy to get in and sometimes they aren't it just depends on the shape of the casting of the engine the actual clocking position of the cylinder attached nuts on the bottom of the cylinder and then possibly also the shape of the inner cylinder baffle these baffles are very nicely built they look like an absolute blueprint baffles so it's just a little kind of frustrating type stuff there so what I'm doing again is now got all that in and tightening up the nuts, put them, got the nuts, lock washers and washers back on and tighten those up. Okay guys, it's a little hot in the hangar, but we've got the first two pieces, actually kind of two and a half pieces of baffle in. The ones we got in, in fact, I'll show you up here close. We got the lower, uh, lower scoop on the bottom of the crankcase area here. 
then we have this other deflector that goes in now the one thing we did do we learned that we put the uh, inner cylinder baffle in at the same time uh, because otherwise once you put the once you put this deflector in you're not going to be able to get this in so we've got that in there it's in there loose now because we've got to get some uh, springs from uh, Cessna. So we're putting these in as a set. So this this is the uh, this will go in here like this. The deflector goes in like somewhere somehow like that, and then we're going to set this in loose. At least it'll be in place for the um, for the uh, when we get get our new springs in. So bottom bottom left is done. Now under the bottom right. This side went in uh, quite a bit easier. On the right side, we only have to take off three nuts. Kind of easy to get to. That fourth or rear nut is actually a little bit hard to get to. Can't really get it with the springs in place for the pushrod tube keepers, but the uh, inter-cylinder inter baffle just popped right into place, and I was able to get this thing kind of back together, get the uh, nuts washers and all that stuff going together. So this one was really a cakewalk, dropped in real easy, very pleasant. Okay, we got the lower left uh, baffle parts on and we got the lower right, we just finished up the lower right. Lower right actually went on a little easier. The Actually it wasn't the baffles that was uh, the issue, it was the inner cylinder baffle, that one that I'm going to leave loose. So. That one just dropped right into place. The other one just needed some fiddling around. It has to do with the casting shape of the um, of the engine. So anyway, bottom is all set up. This is all done. We're all tight along the uh, the uh, pushrod tube bases and all that. So this is all tight. Uh, we'll put the we'll put this little joining doubler in last. But everything looks good here. We're gonna go try one of the. Uh, we'll try putting this side one on and see what how how we do on that. Looks easy, but I don't know. I think it might give me a fight. Anyway, here we go. Baffles. Gotta love them. The, uh, this side baffle went on actually quite easy. There's only two valve cover screws that hold it on, so that worked out pretty well. And then the forward screw holes lined up with the lower baffles we just installed, so all went well. Okay, that didn't go too bad. That actually was about a uh, maybe five, ten minute job, something like that. We ended up putting washers we added, uh, we took these valve cover screws and washers off, and then we put a washer in between the baffle and the valve cover as a spacer to make sure that we get proper clamping on the valve cover. So that's all, all new hardware from the overhaul, everything's set up there, um, and we're ready to go. There's a hole here, this hole here is for the spark plug wires to go down to the uh, lower spark plug. So we'll have to get a grommet and all that, get that set up, but we're in pretty good shape. Now, on to the other side. We'll uh, try the other side. Hopefully it'll be as friendly. Keep on going. Right side was just a repeat of the left side. Very easy. Two screws. Okay, that worked out pretty well. I was uh, pretty pleased with that. That went very well. So the side, left and right, uh, baffles, horizontal baffles, uh, they look real good. The holes and everything is lining up with the lower baffles, so that's good. We'll get all that tightened up when we uh, once we get all the pieces and parts in place so here we go last one going in is the uh, is the big one here and then we also have to got to make sure we don't forget this this is the uh, this ties the two lower ones together so after we get this one in then we'll go and put the uh, all the small hardware in and all that stuff and we'll we'll catch up on that so anyway wish us luck on this one this is uh, we'll see how it goes the last one on the right side I had to just trim just a little bit where a bolt was going into the valve cover however <clears throat> these are millennium cylinders superior millennium cylinders it's a little bit bigger valve cover so could be uh could be just a foul because of the shape of that so that was just a, a little kiss on uh with the uh grinder and that looks like a million bucks so here we go next one goes in the uh the full full across the rear bulkhead Rear baffle was pretty easy. Two screws on the rear two valve covers had to come off. And then also one of the bolts on the split line 
has to come off. It actually is common to the hoist hook on this uh, particular setup. But they went on very, very straightforward. So only five fasteners on this one and all of the, uh, everything lined up with the side baffles. So this was, a, this was a dream on this one too. Hey guys, we're back. Okay, so just finished up the, um, the baffle installation. This rear baffle went on absolutely effortlessly. Fit like a glove, absolutely beautiful. Total time putting the baffles in. Now we have not put the inner cylinder baffles in, which are held in with spring clips, but that, that should only take about 15, 20 minutes all, with all four of them and fumbling around and all that. I feel pretty confident. That's just standard Cessna futzing around. Um, what else? We've got to put in a little miscellaneous hardware. I'm gonna just diddle with that and uh, that'll probably take me about a half hour. I've got um, about uh, one, two, three, four, about eight screws, nuts, uh, some number 10 stuff that I've got to put in. So that's just fiddling, making sure I have the right grip size. So that's the next thing I'll be doing to finish this up. Side fittings and everything was uh, great. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, the draft tube that goes down the side, that's three screws and nuts. Again, about a five minute job. I've just got to collect up the hardware to get that right. Short of that, that's all we've got left. You can see here on our hardware, we've got the um, draft tube. This is the, uh, this joins the two lower pieces. Gotta make sure that gets on. In fact, we've got special instructions on putting that on. So that's that's all good. And then um, the inner, inner cylinder baffles. Uh, so it should be pretty easy. I've gotta put the intake pipes back on. Uh, call that 10 minutes of futzing around. Really, it goes pretty quick. Biggest thing I want to do is make sure all the torques are set and get everything back to spec. Anything that we touched is back to spec. So that's where we are. Air forms, engine baffles. I would definitely give it two thumbs up on a scale of one to 10. I'd give it about a 10 and a half. These things are fabulous. Um, not a paid endorsement. Not that I wouldn't be, you know, wanting one, but uh, not a paid endorsement at all. We've used these on several other engines and very pleased with the product. If you have the opportunity and you're messing around with old junk baffles, it's worth the effort, it's worth the time. If you're a shop, um, you cannot fabricate to this level of quality in your shop, at your shop rate, in anywhere near the time. So um, it's definitely, definitely worthwhile. So that's it for this project. Uh, hoping to get Caitlin flying up to Oshkosh. If not flying up to Oshkosh, flying before Oshkosh. If not flying before Oshkosh, flying and airworthy and crisp and clean so anyway don't tell her that we did this but um she's got all new baffles now so it looks pretty good that's it for this end most importantly and i've got the fan on i gotta apologize and it's been a while i haven't been doing some videos i may have said that in the beginning but it's crazy hot out uh right now it's closing on 100 degrees fahrenheit um i've got a couple others coming out i'm going to do on some fuel senders uh, I need to do, as soon as this aircraft leaves out of here, I'll give you an update on the new shop. Um, we've got some pieces and parts going on. In fact, I'll show you, kind of show you over my shoulder here. Um, we've got some siding going up or wall, wall skins going up, wiring and all that stuff. So we're still not there yet, but as soon as Caitlin's project gets out of here, then we'll sweep it up a little bit and give you a tour. So that's where we are. Most importantly, like, share, subscribe, notify, and uh, remember, we are working on the Foe Fighter. Um, she's out there ready to work, get, get some work on. I've got the, as I told you earlier, I've got a replacement lift strut. Next episode on the Foe Fighter, I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to finish stripping, alodyne or conversion coat, prime and paint, and then also stencil. So we're gonna be doing the lift struts. Everything else on the airplane is gonna be basically the same thing. So that's what's going on there. Um, I've got some, uh, got some other equipment I'm sourcing right now, I'm trying to get some uh, stuff coming in on that. And uh, that's it for this episode of um, Hangar Rats. So if you've got crapped out baffles, uh, two thumbs up to Air Forms up in Wasilla, Alaska. And I believe they're being sourced through a couple different places. I think possibly Spruce, Air Performance, and possibly McFarland also. But if you have any question, any concern, I'm going to put the contact 
for the uh, for them downstairs uh, underneath here but if you have any questions about the quality of all that um, I can assure you this is good stuff I am very impressed this is the best looking stuff out there and uh, and they even powder coat it too if you want to you can uh, get the uh, up trim on that so really good stuff what else that's it kids it's hot out I'm gonna go get a cold drink and start messing with the uh, little nuts bolts washers and get this thing all tied up final final but total touch time um, we started with an engine with no baffles on it so we didn't have to take any nasty crap off I'm gonna say three hours if you had to take all the baffles off clean the engine all that probably four hours total touch time rebaffling your engine and getting it getting it going this is for a little four-cylinder this is an 0200 that goes on a, this is a 0200 and a Cessna 120 it's an SDC installation but you still use the uh, old baffles so that's where we are we'll catch you guys later hopefully you'll see this plane flying around either uh, Oshkosh or Sonofon or who knows where we'll catch you later hang rats out <laughs>